Every language has its own natural sounds. These sounds are called phonemes. And some languages have more phonemes, some languages have fewer. I believe English has 44. These are the unique sounds in the language, like ah, that's a one, and zh, that's one. These are the sounds that make up the language. Some have a lot, some have much less. Now, when you hear someone who's not a native English speaker speaking English, you can learn a lot from noticing the sounds that they make, right? Even if, you know, those are not your pronunciation issues, you can learn a lot from noticing those things, being aware of those things, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a short video. It's a video that I, I it's, it's, a, it's a great video. It's very funny. Uh, uh, it's an old video. I, I remember watching it maybe in 2011 or something. It's a short clip from a Japanese TV show where there's an English lesson and one of the students is called up to speak. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to pick out some of the things that are difficult for this student and we're going to see how we could help the student improve if we wanted to. But then I want you to also pay attention to those sounds so that you can develop your awareness. Can you actually hear what's going on there? Why is it that Japanese English speakers, when they speak English, tend to struggle with certain sounds, and maybe Chinese English speakers might struggle with different sounds, and maybe Russian English speakers might struggle with different sounds, right? Why is this? Well, it's because each language has their own phonemes. But the key thing that I want you to take away is you don't know what those things are until you develop awareness and that is your ability to notice things your ability your ability to sort of hear the difference between this and that oh yeah i can hear the difference if you don't have awareness you can't hear the difference if you can't hear the difference you can't ever correct your own pronunciation or improve your own pronunciation and if you don't know how to improve your own pronunciation you'll never build up good habits right so let's take a look at this at this video. We're going to kind of go through it slowly. It's a good one. It's a classic. Uh, and uh, I, I, you know, I'm not criticizing. I'm not criticizing anything. I think the this <laughs> this girl is so is actually so cute. It's so funny. It's it's brave of her to to speak in front of a class and uh, being recorded. Right. That's awesome. I'm just using it as we're using it here as a, as a tool to improve our uh, our listening skill and our awareness. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Shock. Shock. I'll read the subtitles in case you can't see them. Okay, so they're the, the teachers at the front. This is like a, a TV show where they're learning English. Who's going to talk about her shock or shocking incident? Shock. Ah. Kame. Uh, please enjoy sixth generation member Ku Kame's uh, miraculous English conversation. Note that in the subtitles there, they put in quotes miraculous. So that sounds sarcastic, like it's not miraculous. Please enjoy. Sixth generation member. I don't know what that means, though. <laughs> oh, I think 16 year old. I ate cheese that was in the refrigerator at home, but actually that was for my dog. Okay, so that's what she's going to try to say, and this is her shocking story. She's going to try to say it in English. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, when I found out later, I was shocked. Okay, so there's cheese in a refrigerator. And then the cheese is for dogs, her dog. Okay. So now she's going to try to say it in English. Here we go. You can do it. Cheese. Okay. Let's, let's just... Let's just go back a little bit there. Listen carefully to the pronunciation. 
Cheese. Yes. How would you say that if you were going to try to say that? Cheese. Z. Notice anything? Z. 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 So what would be the difference between the Z sound in cheese and what she said? Cheese. Notice anything? I hear two syllables. Teta. Whereas I would pronounce this with one syllable. Cheese. 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 Also notice the different Z sound. That S makes a Z sound. So instead of it being Z, that's a little bit too hard. The English Z sound tends to be much softer. And so it's Z. So the English Z sound is Z. You should be able to carry it on for a long time. Cheese. One syllable. Box. Okay, again. She's making a two, a one syllable word, two syllables. Box. Box. The one, one reason I love to imitate different accents is because it's a great way to practice your awareness to imitate different accents. Cheese. Box. 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 So it's a really hard K sound and it's being two syllables. Well, if we took off the U at the end, then box. Box. Okay, that, that would be more like the British English pronunciation. That would be okay. We've taken out the U sound. How would Americans say it? I would say more of an A sound instead of O. Ah, box, box, cheese box, cheese box. Kuru. Ah, again, two syllables, kuru. And instead of an L here, it's a ru, ru, ru. So that's kind of a roll of the tongue, re, 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 where you roll your tongue outward, right? Ru, ru, ru. You're actually touching your tongue to the roof of your mouth for a very brief moment. So it's two syllables, and it's this sort of rolling R sound that replaces the L sound. Uh, so there, you would just say, cool, cool. And that still touches the tongue to the top of the roof of your mouth, but you don't release it. It stays there. Cool, cool. If you use R, if you want to use R, your tongue never touches the roof of your mouth. Core, for example, C-O-R-E. OK. So he's maybe having a difficult time understanding her because this two syllable thing, changing one syllable words to two syllable words, makes it hard to kind of catch the meaning. Box it. What is box? It? Oh, box. Oh, okay. He says, You want to say refrigerator, right? And she says, yes, refrigerator. It's kind of hard. I'll tell you how to say refrigerator. Refrigerator. So he says refrigerator, refrigerator. But actually, I feel that most, I'm assuming he's American or Canadian based on the way he speaks. Uh, actually, I think most people would say refrigerator refrigerator so the difference would be we don't hit the t so hard not refrigerator but refrigerator refrigerator so you hear that there's a light d sound dur, 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 which is actually ironically the same as that kudu du, that do is the same as the dur <laughs> that we use to replace the t sound in a lot of words in english refrigerator now i'm correcting him <laughs> no he's not wrong it's correct it's just i think most people wouldn't say it like that but he's not actually teaching them how to make the sound, right? He's not actually teaching them the pronunciation. He's just saying it. So you have to break it down a little bit. There's the re and then the fri. That is very hard because the R is right beside the F. Fri and then jur. Jur. That's like a J sound. And then A, long sound. And then der, 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 der. Oh, uh, okay. One more time. Refrigerator. Hmm? Refrigerator. Refrigerator. Very. Re uh -huh. Excuse me? Refresh. 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 Oh, we misunderstood. Refrigerator. Refrigerator. Very good. Refrigerator. Okay, that's better. 
So there, if you listen carefully, she's got the syllables right, right? <laughs> listen carefully. Refrigerator. Refrigerator. Very good. So she's got the syllables. Refrigerator. So that was the first issue is adding syllables to the word, right? For example, box. But now, and also, furi, that two syllables, adding that. She's got it pretty much now, but she's still doing the uri sound at the beginning. So what would we want to do to fix that R sound? We would say, don't touch your tongue to the top of your mouth. If you want to say the R sound correctly, your tongue, the tip of your tongue, cannot touch the top of the roof of your mouth. If you feel it touch, it's wrong. So, it's just sitting there in the middle, kind of curled back, not touching anything. Re, re, instead of uri, which is flicking outward and touching, so it shouldn't touch. Refrigerator yeah. in mm -hmm. cheese. Refrigerate in cheese? <laughs> oh my god! Cheese in the he says, it's the other way. Cheese in refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. So she just mixed up the order there. She mixed up the word in. Preposition in would mean one. The first thing you say, if you have in after it, is the thing that's usually smaller, right? And is contained by the second thing you say. Cheese in refrigerator. Ah. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> Can we have you say refrigerator one more time? As students are asking one more. <laughs> hey, don't laugh at her. That's so nice. <laughs> refrigerator. One more. Refrigerator. 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 Mm. Refrigerator. Refrigerator. Mm -hmm. well, another thing there is at the end. That's a tough one too. If there's a sound at the end, she's saying a da at the end. It's a da da da. That da sound is just the open a at the end. If there's an r at the end, you have to still remember to curl the tongue up. Er, refrigerator. If you need to remember it, just do it very long, and then you can remind yourself to do it. Refrigerator. So you can make the R's really, really long as a way to help yourself remember. Yeah. <laughs> So again, that's the uh Switching the in, the preposition. Hand in cheese, cheese in hand. Cheese in my hand. In cheese? Oh my god. Here's a cheese in your hand. Cheese in hand. Okay. Cheese in hand. Cheese in hand. Okay. Eat. I. I. Eat. Eat. Cheese. In. In. Refrigerator. Refrigerator. Oh, that's not correct. I eat cheese in refrigerator. I eat the cheese in my refrigerator. He's giving her incorrect English. Come on, man. Come on, teacher man. I ate the cheese in my refrigerator, or I eat the cheese in the refrigerator would be good. You gotta have. Gotta I use those. Yes. But. Mm. Mother, talk. Oh. Ah. So there, uh, th, if you listen carefully to the uh, that sound. Mother. So there's again the R thing. At the end, we want to make sure to curl the tongue up at the end of R. Mother. But notice also the th sound is becoming kind of a Z sound. Ma, za, za. So the Z has replaced the voiced th sound. 
TH generally has two pronunciations. Actually, it has three. But the most common are the two pronunciations. One's voiced and one's unvoiced. And the voiced one is like th, where you have your tongue out like that. And the other one is unvoiced, th, where you don't use your voice because it's unvoiced. So when you have a word like mother, you've got to flick your tongue out and get used to the feeling of the, 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 like that. And the reason for that is because if you replace it with a Z, it can cause misunderstandings, right? I think there's a difference between accent, right? Everyone has their own slightly different way of speaking, and not using pronunciation that's clear enough so that people understand. So someone might understand, misunderstand, maza, because there's a Z there. And they might think of Mazda, when you are, they might not understand that, right? So that would be something to correct. Talk. Oh. Said. Dog food. Dog cheese. Dog, Dog cheese. My. Haha, shabiru. Dog cheese. Dog cheese. My. My shock. I see. I see. Okay. I think she wanted to say there, uh, mother told me the cheese was for the dog. And I was shocked. But I mean, very brave to try to speak. She, her English level is obviously quite low. And that she would stand up and try to put a sentence together is brave and, and admirable. To not be afraid, to just try, to just do it. No matter if you're wrong or people laugh. Like he was laughing at her, right? He was laughing at her. But she didn't mind. She took it in good humor. If you're always cautious and careful and worried about people laughing, then it's going to be hard to gain confidence and make progress. So it's the right attitude, definitely, to improve her pronunciation. Just a few things to work on there, especially the R sound in words and at the ends of words, and making one-syllable words, two-syllable words, and also, of course, the, the Z, the TH, and Z flipping thing. Oh, and, and the and the prepositions, uh, the order of the order of the things when you use a preposition like cheese in hand or hand in cheese, right? But everyone has their own little things to work on, myself included, right? I, I consider myself to be an English learner and I'm always trying to improve how I communicate and how I speak. And so I think it's important to then just develop the ability to notice things. If you can develop that, that's a superpower. You can hear things that you didn't hear before. If you can do that and then turn it into self-awareness so that you can start noticing yourself and things you need to improve, be honest with yourself, then you're going to actually start making progress, okay? So hopefully you found this interesting and useful. If you haven't already done so, guys, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to also subscribe and check out my full courses in the links in the description.